Hey friends, Wayne over here at the Ram Man. Hey, I'm wanting to go over some Mopar boosters. A uh, little bit of information. I hadn't done any uh, power boosters video in a while. It, ama it amazes me the number of people that don't know a damn thing about a Mopar, and yet when you ask them, hey, why don't you take a look at your service manual, they're like, I don't know, deer in headlights. The idea never, ever crossed their mind. When I was screwing with these cars, they was about $200. You had to find originals. Now they got them reprints everywhere for $45 or whatever. But pictures worth a thousand words, especially when you ain't an expert. Anyway, we had this uh, 66 Charger power unit come in. And this is a really, really good example of some of the biggest, uh, well, we're going to use the word jury rigging. That's the term we're going to use today. So, uh, yeah. So, this uh, single Bendix came in. You know, this was often used on the uh, drum brake cars because it's a single diaphragm. Don't have to have a whole lot of help and this is on a B body now of course all of the B bodies 66 through 70 use the same setup front to back for review master cylinder booster single or tandem drum or disc you got your firewall plate and then you got your swivel linkage E bodies they had the same thing look there's a big old detailed picture pretty damned involved. You got sleeves and bushings and sleeves and bushings and lock nuts and crimp nuts and U-nuts and it's pretty effing involved, tell you the truth. As a matter of fact, uh, here's part of one uh, disassembled right here. Now back in the day when you didn't have your swivel linkage, you used just shit out of work. Look, you call up a wrecking yard and tell them, Hey, man, I just need a swivel linkage for my power setup. And they'd tell you, Well, if I sell you that swivel linkage or whatever, I don't have shit. And I might as well just throw the master cylinder and booster away because I've broken up a six or $800 unit. And they just tell you to go eat shit. Didn't matter what the offer was. So, you know, they did that. As a fulcrum point, because they needed to lift the booster up just a little bit. So, like on this B body, so you've got your factory B body power rod. You know, it's three and a quarter inches from the rear of the case to the center of the eyelet. That's how you can tell your B body. Then you've got this machine bushing that slides in there so it can pivot. Then you've got the main part of the bracket. You can see this is all pressed together. Now you're talking about the late 60s or whatever. This is pretty high tech. Then you've got the dumbbell rod and all this machining right here. This is my reproduction. You've got another swivel bushing pressed in there so that it'll swivel right. That was the ancient spring retainer that was never there. So that goes in the assembly like that. And then you've got the special bolt that goes through the shoulder bolt so it doesn't get caught up on no threads. Yeah. Then you've got the special crimp nuts, U-nuts, right? So that they don't come loose and you lose your shit when you're going down the damn highway, right? Then you've got this other machine sleeve that goes in here on the fulcrum point, right? Then you've got this special bolt that goes through there so it didn't get caught up. Then you've got another damned old style U-nut, three-way crimp nut that locks down so that some bitch can't come loose and you kill you and your kids, right? So this whole mess right here, and that always points to the booster, it goes right there on your booster rod along with this last high grade bolt right with the special shoulder goes through like this with your nut again 
and you can't have this shit locked down. That's why they engineered it where you don't want these tight because this whole freaking mess has to pivot at all these points so it'll work right. All this mess has to pivot, right? And of course, your firewall plate, it goes on like that. First thing that goes up underneath it, if you really want to get super anal, is your little uh, gasket. Originally, some of them did, some of them didn't. And then your plate, and then your firewall gasket right there. So that little contraption right there, that's like some NASA shit. And we're talking about 1966. Pretty involved. Now what was on this old boy had, now we've seen some jury rigging, but this crap right here was bolted up on this B body and they had this bolt right here so freaking tight it couldn't even pivot. We had to get out the big old six point end wrenches to get it loose. It was crazy. And then on top of that, to take this jury shit rig into a whole nother level is these rods in a booster, they have to be captured somehow, some way. Whether it's a Bendix design, Midland Ross design, or whatever, you can't have the rod of this booster just coming out, falling on the floor under a certain circumstance, right? Well, this booster right here, it had no effing keeper in here. This booster had no effing rod keeper. Me and Uncle Ron, we about, well, we were surprised. On Bendix's, you, the rod goes in through the hub, and this plate, this great big thick hardened keeper, slides in from the side and captures that rod groove slides in from the side and captures that rod groove so the damn thing can't come out. Whole hub's got to bust for this to come out. So that's what was on this 66 Charger and he sent his booster in to get redone and master cylinder in and get redone and, six, and he's going to have a beautiful setup if uh, we can get this crap right here off and get the right linkage on here. And uh, no wonder the guy didn't have no brakes. I know for a fact that he didn't have no brakes. That's, that's some of the most screwed up shit that we have seen since Ron opened in 81. And I'm gonna tell you what, Uncle Ron has seen some shit, especially in the 90s. There you go. That's how that should be rigged up, and that bolts to your pedal. That bolts to your booster, that bolts to your pedal with your pedal bolt, and that bolts to the pedal hanger right there so that it swivels back and forth. There you go, my friends. Uh... We just made a video of back to common sense. If you're working on a Mopar and you don't have a service manual, well, I'm not even going to say it. You probably know where you stand. God bless you. God bless America. And happy Moparing.